So hi, this is uh, Dr. Kim, and I've just had my eye color change today, and they are fabulous, and I'm very happy with the results. So I have to tell you that from a medical perspective, as a doctor, the most important thing to do is to weigh the benefits versus the risks of any procedure that you have done. What are the benefits of having an eye color change? Well, one of the benefits is that you don't have to wear contact lenses anymore. Wearing contacts has its own risks. Wearing contact lenses increases your risk for dry eyes. It increases your risk for having infections, for corneal abrasions. This is just some of the risks of having to wear contacts and put them in every day. And the benefits of not having to wear contacts is that you get the permanent eye color change that you want. You can be whatever you want and your confidence is going to become higher because you'll always be the person you've always wanted to be. If you wanted to have blue eyes, you can have blue eyes. If you wanted to have green eyes, you can have green eyes. There are so many color options available through Bidocular. And believe me, you'll be happy that you did. So what are the risks involved in a procedure? When I have a patient who's undergoing any kind of procedure, I say, look at the benefits and then weigh those against the risks. So what are the risks of having an eye color change procedure. So mind you that you have to put everything in perspective. One, it is a procedure and it is a cosmetic procedure. And how does this cosmetic procedure compare to other cosmetic procedures? Well, there is no general anesthesia involved in this procedure. It is a low risk procedure. Whereas if you have other cosmetic procedures like a tummy tuck or a facelift, abdominal plasty, those are high risk procedures. They require general anesthesia and it takes a long time to recover. There's a huge incision. No such thing with the implant. Each procedure takes about five minutes per eye and only thing that's required is a topical numbing medication, a little bit of pressure, the implants are in and you're done and there's no long-term recovery at all. The second thing you want to look at when you're having a procedure are the complications and you want to keep these in perspective. Of course people who have had a bad complication they are going to be a very loud and you're not going to hear the good outcomes. You're only going to hear the bad outcomes of those who've had a bad experience, but there have been a lot of excellent outcomes with the bright ocular implant procedure. And you have to bear in mind that those with excellent outcomes are very, very happy. You can see them all day long. And so it's important to to weigh um, the good outcomes versus bad outcomes. And I can tell you that your surgeon goes through extraordinary measurements and evaluation just to make sure that you are likely to have a really good outcome. If you are not a candidate for a successful outcome, he is not going to move forward with the procedure. He's not in it for money. He's not in it for gain. He's in it to make you look beautiful and to achieve your wish if it is possible. Lots of people are turned away because they just don't meet the requirements. And if you do not meet the requirements, you cannot have the procedure. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. He will not take a risk if the outcome is not going to be good for you. Always I tell patients, when you're having a procedure done, you want someone who has experience in doing that procedure, not someone who has just done one or two. Someone who's done many, many procedures of the same procedure and who has seen a lot of variability in doing that same procedure. The next thing you want to look at is you, the individual. What kind of patient? patient are you? Are you a patient who follows directions? Because you're going to be given a long list of instructions, not only from Bright Ocular, but also from the doctor as well. And it is very important that you follow all of the instructions. You cannot skip instructions. There will be drops. There will be things you can do, things you cannot do. I would advise you to print out everything and carry it with you and to follow those instructions to the letter. If you violate any of those you're likely to have a bad outcome and who's to blame but yourself. So you need to really follow the instructions. And so you need to be disciplined as an individual and follow the instructions exactly as they are told to you. Avoid things you are not supposed to do and do things you're supposed to do. Don't get lazy and not do your drops. Do your drops consistently around the clock as you're advised to do. And you're going to have an excellent outcome if you do that. Next thing I want you to do is to be very balanced. Look at the good and the bad. Don't just look at the bad. Because even though you can have a bad outcome with any kind of invasive procedure, the question is whether or not it happens often or whether it happens rarely. And as you can see, there's a lot of success stories 
with this procedure. People often say, well, it's not FDA approved. Well, there's a lot of medicine that's practiced today very successfully that is not FDA approved. For instance, when we look at something like diabetic neuropathy, a disabling condition, we treat that with a medication known as Neurontin, also known as gabapentin. Gabapentin is used for seizure control. However, it has an off-label use for treatment of peripheral neuropathy. That has never been approved by the FDA for the use of this, but it's very, very successful. Likewise, I can say that if something has not been FDA approved, would you be in favor of traveling someplace like Europe for the latest cancer treatment, even though it wasn't FDA approved? Approved? Absolutely you would. So that cannot be your benchmark, your standard for determining whether or not to have a procedure done. It has to be the success, the history of this implant and whether or not there's been success stories. And there has been. And so just in the end, I want you to keep a balanced perspective and look at the pros and the cons, look at the good and the bad and weigh everything and keep everything balanced. And don't be swayed by one person who's really loud because they had a bad outcome or didn't follow instructions versus someone who's had an excellent outcome. I chose Frost Gray, and I couldn't be happier.